So this is an example where we can look at a car's 0 to 60 time. In this case, we're going to look at the Tesla Model S P100D, uh, which is the sedan version for, for uh, Tesla. It's been around for about a decade. Uh, it's a performance model that has dual engines, uh, the 100 kilowatt battery. Uh, they actually have a new version coming out called the Plaid version, which actually has three motors. Uh, but this version uh, has, an, has a ridiculous acceleration uh, for a production car. Uh, it rivals really any car on the market. Um, but we typically see the car specs in 0 to 60 time. But what does that mean when, when, as an actual acceleration value? So what I want to do is walk through the steps to determine what the Tesla's acceleration is in a unit of meters per second squared, where meters per second squared is our standard unit in science, meters and seconds. Uh, and then I want to look at, well, how far will the car travel in that time period? All right, so we have some raw data. We know something about the car. Uh, it travels from a speed of zero miles per hour all the way up to 60 miles per hour, and it does that in just 2.3 seconds. Uh, so let's look at how this car is moving. And we know this car is speeding up, which means it's accelerating. And any car that's moving in a straight line uh, follows a model, and that model fits one of these two equations. Its position, x, where it's going to be located, is a function of its acceleration, the time it's traveling, how fast it's traveling when it starts, and where it starts. And so we can predict where it's going to be located. Right? So that's a model to predict any object that's accelerating. Right? And as we've seen before, if it's not accelerating, that first term can go away, and we just see our constant velocity equation. Now, if it's accelerating, its velocity is changing, and we might want to know what its velocity is. Well, our velocity is a function of its acceleration times the time it's accelerating plus the velocity it was going when it started. Right? So we can determine what its velocity will be if we know its acceleration and the time it's accelerating. So these two problems will solve any problem uh, in this unit. And if you look at the variables in this unit, we have acceleration, we have time, we have velocities, we have positions. And I like to organize these variables into a table to help us identify what we have and what we need to find. And I call this an ATVX table. Just a catchy way to remember what the variables are. So I'm going to write out what I have. A, T. Now velocity is potentially changing. So we would have a starting or initial velocity. And we would have some later or final velocity. And the position is also changing. So we might start somewhere an initial position, and we might finish somewhere, a final position. And so once we identify these variables, let's write in the things we know. Well, in part A, they ask, what is the acceleration? So we actually don't know the acceleration. So I'm going to leave that blank, put a line there, and I'll put a, put a star next to it since I know that's something I want. Uh, the time, they tell you, well, this all occurs in 2.3 seconds. That's the time it takes to get from 0 to 60. And 0 to 60, those are our speeds. All right, and if we're moving in a direction, that speed is the same as velocity. Uh, so we'll write it in as our velocity. It starts with zero miles per hour of velocity, which if we want to get the units right, technically I would write zero meters per second, no conversion necessary. But it's important to note that we want to make sure that we match all units. So we're going to convert all units to the units that we want in our answer. So we're going to convert to the same units as our answer. All right? So we're going to want everything in meters and seconds. All right? And that's those are the standard units that we're dealing with in, in physics. Uh, miles per hour is a velocity unit, uh, but it's in miles over hours. We want to get that to meters per second. Now, from zero, that's a pretty easy conversion. But later, we're going to be traveling at 60 miles per hour. And we want to take that to meters per second. Um, I like to write miles per hour as a fraction to help us with our fence post. So it's going to be 60 miles, there's miles, over one hour. So miles per hour, is that's one way to write that. And that allows me to set up a fence post to convert that. It becomes a two-step. I'm going to get rid of miles, and I want to go to meters. 
and I want to get rid of hours and go to seconds. If you notice, to get rid of them, I, I put them on the opposite side of the dividing bar. And we need to find a relationship. Now, if you were to look it up, you would know that there are exactly 1,609 meters in one mile. And there are 60 seconds in a minute and another 60 in a in a uh, hour, 60 minutes in an hour. So one hour is actually 3,600 seconds. And so algebraically, miles cancel, and I've got meters. Hours cancel, and i got seconds. And all I need to do is multiply across, and I can convert 60 miles per hour into meters per second. So 60 times 1609 times 1 divided by 1 times 1 times 3600, and I get 26.8 meters per second. So this car goes 0 to 26.8 meters per second in 2.3 seconds. All right. Now, my table also have an initial position. Well, it's convenient if they don't tell you anything about where you're starting. We'll always call the initial position 0. And we can then determine what our final position is going to be. And in fact, how far, how far is really just a change in position, which would be x final minus x initial. And if x initial is 0, then the change in position would just be equal to whatever I get for x final. And so my answer for x final is actually the answer, the answer that I want for part B. All right, so I've set up my table here, and I now know I have two gaps, two things that I'm missing. All right, so let's see what we got. So what I like to do now is look at those two equations, and I'm going to put a red dot over the things that I have. All right, so everywhere where I see a T, I'm going to put a dot. So I have a T, I have a T, and I have a T. Everywhere where I see a V initial, I put a dot. I have that, I have that. Everywhere I see V final, I put a dot x initial, I'll put a dot, and then I'm going to put a question mark over the things that I don't know. I don't know x final, and I don't know a, and I'll put that here. Now, anywhere that I have an equation with only one missing piece, I can always solve for that. So in part a, I want to find what is the acceleration. And if you look at my equation, I could use one of those two equations. We'll call this equation one and equation two. And I can use equation two, if you notice, the only thing missing is A. So I'm going to use equation two, which says that V final is equal to AT plus V initial. And V final is 26.8 meters per second. Acceleration is unknown. My time is 2.3 seconds, and my initial velocity is 0 meters per second. All right, so I could throw that away, and to solve for A, I'm going to divide by 2.3 seconds. Notice what happens. My units become meters per second per second, which is the same as meters per second squared. So I can take 26.8, divide by 2.3, and I get 11.66 meters per second squared. My acceleration is 11.66 meters per second squared, which is pretty pretty ridiculous considering gravity is 9.8. So if you were to jump off a roof into a pool, your speed would change by 9.8 meters per second every second as you're falling. And in fact, this car will speed you up faster than what gravity will do if you were falling. All right, so we've just determined that a 0 to 60 in 2.3 seconds is the same as saying that it's accelerating at 11.66 meters per second squared. Now, if I want to find part B, well, now we know A, and so we can find x final using that first equation. So for part B, we can use, we want to find x final, and we can use our x final equation. x final is 1 half at squared plus v initial t, plus x initial. When I plug in what I have, I now know a, so 1 half of 11.66. My time to get there is still 2.3 seconds. That's meters per second squared. My initial velocity is 0 meters per second times 2.3 seconds. 
plus zero meters. Now notice, when I start at rest, that goes away. And when I start at zero, that goes away. So I really just have this other part. And don't forget your square in here. Right? And so in my calculator, I can evaluate 1 half is 0.5 times the answer I just got, 11.65, times 2.3 squared, and I get a final position of 30.8 meters. X final is about 30.8 meters. That's how far the car is going to travel in that time period. Now, if we wanted to, we can convert that to feet, right? Uh, if we were going to do a conversion to feet, uh, it's, I think, one foot is 0 0.3048 meters. We can do a quick little conversion if you want to see what that is in feet, from meters to feet. One foot is 3048. So if I divide it by 0 0.3048, I get the number of feet, which turns out it's over just about 100 feet, 101 feet of distance, to put it in perspective. All right, so you baseball guys, 90 foot baseline, so 100 feet, you would be just past first base in this car and you would already be going 60 miles an hour. All right, so just walking you through an example here where we can take a car's spec for 0 to 60 and now translate that into some physics terms of its acceleration and how far it has traveled in that amount of time.